Hello and welcome to another Pepper's Moustache Musing. So this musing was supposed to be done last night, but I didn't realize that my phone did not um, record the last bit, which I thought was the most important part of the whole musing. Anyway, I'm going to talk about faith healing and divine healing and why you shouldn't believe in it. And then at the end of this talk, I'm going to tell you, if you're a Christian, what you should do if you're a Christian and you, you're you taught to believe in divine healing and faith healing. So what, sh- what you should do and why you should do what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm about to tell you, okay? To give you a bit of background, <clears throat> I came came from a charismatic Christian uh, church. I was a very staunch Christian when I was a teenager. While all my friends went to university, I thought I heard the voice of God telling me to attend um, Bible college. So I devoted my life to ministry. I worked in full-time ministry. And I, the years when I was active in church, I was active, I was active in the Hallelujah Church, the, <laughs> the song and dance church, the laying on of hands and rise up and be healed, brother kind of church. So when I talk about healing, I'm referring mostly to uh, the Christian God. But if your religion offers divine healing, I don't really see any difference. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So, when I was in church, I believed in divine healing. I believed that God healed and it says so in the in the Bible it says in it says so in the Old Testament and it says so in the New Testament in the Old Testament God is referred to as Jehovah Rapha which means God my healer isn't it <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure it is <laughs> And uh, in the New Testament, of course, we all know the famous uh, verse, which which says that by his by his stripes, him meaning referring to Jesus, by his stripes we are healed. So, healing is uh, a big part in a Christian's life. Believing God for healing is a big thing. And um, when when you have no more hope, I suppose that's that's what you will probably uh, turn to divine healing. <clears throat> However, I cannot think of any incident or example of divine healing being real. I cannot think of one example of divine healing. I read many years ago about someone uh, someone had asked or maybe he, he, he had said lah, this is on the internet. He said, you know, if, if divine healing really works, there's one a sector or one group of people who would be like totally interested in it, they would probably want to know more about this divine healing if if it worked. And that would be the military. Think about it. Soldiers go out and fight. They get their legs blown off. They come back to the camp. The pastor or the chaplain pay, prays for them. And he gets new legs. Miraculous. 
they get shot, they fall into a pit, they break their legs, they break their arms, they come back to camp, a minister prays for them, and they are healed. Wouldn't that be something of interest to the military? I tell you, if divine healing really was real, the military would pour millions of dollars to research the power of God to heal. Think of all the money that they would save from building military hospitals, getting doctors onto the scene. Can you imagine doctors have to serve in war zones? That's crazy. Which doctor want to put their lives on the line? These doctors are putting their lives on the line because their fellow countrymen are putting their lives on the line, going out there to fight, going out there to defend, you know, something that they believe in. So can you imagine, would it be better if we had this divine healing thing? I bet you if the military got involved, research, the kind of prayers, I think they would know exactly what word to use for prayers, prayer, what are the ways to lay hands. I mean, you would, you would, you would know everything there was to know about, about divine healing. But you know why the military does not use divine healing? Obviously, it does not work. But I can understand when Christians tell me that they uh, want to rely on God for healing. First of all, it's, it's, it's stated in the Bible and there are so many instances of Jesus healing people. So I suppose they want to follow the example, the good example, as given by Jesus, by Paul, by Peter. So Christians will also follow. Lah. But there's a problem. The problem is, what if it's something that you, that really needs help, that really, really needs attention? I'm going to tell you the story about my friend Andrew. Andrew and I were in Bible college. Together we were in the same class. And in our second year in Bible college, just before the semester break, the principal of the Bible College gave us all books, a, a book each to read. And we were told to read it and come back. And when we came back to uh, college again, when college reopened, we were to discuss and uh, give a book report, lah, so to speak. Lah. So, so that's what we did. Well, there was one guy, he had read uh, a book called, called Ethics in a Permissive Society. And this was written by William Barclay, the great William Barclay. And the opening story of the book was, it seems that there was this uh, village in Africa and the villagers had heard that some terrorists and some um, militia or something good, something like that were going from village to village and killing people. So they knew that this militia were on their way. So what they did was they went to hide in the jungle. So when the militia came, arrived at their village, there was no one. 
while they were hiding in the jungle, one of the babies started to cry. And they were the mother was afraid that the baby would give away their hiding uh, hiding position. So the mother tried to keep the baby quiet and pacify the baby, but the baby just would not keep quiet. In the end, to stop the baby from giving away their position, the story says that the mother strangled her own baby. So while she murdered her own baby, she had saved her village. And that, that split our college, our, our class in Bible college into two. <laughs> One camp said we should never ever lie, no matter what. And then there was another camp that said that, you know what, lying is okay if it's, if it's a white lie. After all, we all lie to our children and say vegetables are nice to eat when really it's not. But we want our kids to eat, eat their vegetables, so we give them a white lie. And that debate, I remember, it just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until the end of that class. And the lecturer, when the lecturer had left, I remember, Andrew got up and addressed the class. And he spoke. And when he spoke, you can, it came from his heart. He pleaded with us. He told us, under no circumstances should we lie because lying is a sin it's one of the ten commandments thou shalt not bear false witness and he told us trust in God God will <clears throat> show you a way a way out so don't lie that was the kind of Christian Andrew was this man was not one of those wishy-washy Christians, Sunday Christians. No, this man was a man really convicted of his, his Christian faith. After we finished uh, Bible college, Andrew eventually <clears throat> became a ministry, uh, a, a, a missionary, and uh, he ministered, I found out later, uh, he ministered in countries like Thailand, Burma, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, and every every now and then, once or twice, he would stop by Kuala Lumpur, and when he did, he would call me, and we, we would meet up for dinner, whatever. Even though I very seldom contacted him, but he knew my church, which was quite a popular church back then. So he would contact the church and uh, to contact me. Uh. And that's, that's, uh, that's how we kept in touch off and on. This is back in the days before there was the internet. But still, <clears throat> Andrew, uh, I want to ask Andrew, how you, how you financing yourself? Because you know you you're going to these poor groups of people. They they can't be giving you uh, the kinds of offerings that you need to that can afford you your air ticket and whatnot, right? And he said, "Oh, I just trust in God." And this is the kind of guy that Andrew is. He's, I tell you, when I say he's not one of those wishy-washy Christians. I really mean he's not one of those wishy-washy Christians. This is a man of faith. But two years ago, I read on his Facebook that he had uh, he, he he was suffering from cancer. But the good thing was he was getting some sort of treatment for it. But every time he wrote about his 
cancer or an update about his cancer, he would always say something along the lines of, brothers and sisters, please stand in faith with me. I've already rebuked this cancer. This is a test from God. This is an attack from the devil. I do not receive this. I reject it in Jesus' name. And I stand in faith. I claim my healing. And then he will have scriptures. And this went on. And sometime last year, uh, he updated his Facebook and said that he had lost a lot of weight, presumably from the chemotherapy that he was uh, receiving, or maybe the therapy that he was receiving, or maybe the cancer was, you know, affecting him. So that went on. And last month, I was very sad to read an, an update on his Facebook saying that he had passed away. He had lost his fight with cancer and he had passed away. The big question is, why the hell didn't God heal this servant of his? This is not just any servant. This is a good and faithful servant. And yet, after all that faith, claiming of claiming the healing, the gift of healing, he still passed away. To me, the answer is obvious. God does not heal. Sometimes uh, some of my non-Christian friends, when they are told by their Christian friends, uh, you know, when they are sick and then their Christian friends come, come around or their Christian friends find out that they are sick, they'll offer to pray for, for the, you know, the sick friend, which is really nice. It shows that you're concerned. <clears throat> but some of my non-Christian friends are really naughty. They, they would say, you know, after you pray for me, you should also go straight to the hospital and pray for everybody there and heal them as well. <laughs> it's obvious, isn't it? It's obvious that Christians don't go to the hospitals to any hospital to pray for anyone because nobody ever gets healed. Can you imagine if really Christians really had this power from God to heal people or God could really heal people, we would have no use for hospitals. Seriously. But we got hospitals everywhere. Just look at the COVID-19. This pandemic is ravaging the entire planet. <clears throat> Seven and a half billion people are suffering the effects of the COVID-19 virus. Not one group is exempted from this COVID-19. Not one group. If you say that, hey, have you noticed that the Christians do not fall or do not con contract, uh, uh, cannot be infected by the COVID-19 virus, I tell you, if that's true, my God, everybody will be a Christian, right? But Christian people get it as well, just as much as anybody else, any non-Christian person. Really, this is obvious, really. It, it's, it's obvious, right? About this time last year, Kenneth Copeland, a flamboyant American preacher, for those of you who don't know, 
he blew away <laughs> COVID-19. You can go online and uh, take a look at the video where he blows, he literally <laughs> the virus away. <laughs> One year later, the numbers have not come down. The numbers have gone up. Well, if the numbers have come down, it's, in, it's relative to the number of vaccines that has been rolled out. <clears throat> so really, when I say it's obvious that God doesn't heal, I mean, it's obvious God does not heal. So, now what? Now you're a Christian, you're thinking, you've always been told to claim healing and to believe in healing, to stand in faith, to have faith. And this is, this is the, 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 the thing that is difficult to, to understand. When I was a Christian, of course, I thought I understood it. In Hebrews 11, it says that faith is the evidence of things hoped for. The substance of it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is, you know, when, when, I, when I was part of the charismatic movement, that, that verse was one of made so much sense. But now that I don't believe in God anymore, that verse makes the worst sense ever. <laughs> but yet we are commanded to walk in faith. We are called people of faith. That's what Christians are called. So, if you don't have faith, then what are you? You're a, you're a nobody. You're not a Christian. You're not a proper Christian. But now that I've shown you that divine healing and faith healing does not work, God does not heal anyone, where does that leave you? Well, <clears throat> I know you don't want to give up your faith and I do not encourage anyone to give up their faith. When I gave up my faith, I went through uh, quite a bit of depression. I didn't realize that I, 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 was, in, uh, I was suffering from depression. But now that I look back, I have to say that, yeah, I, I suffered um, from depression. It was uh, terrible. It's like your whole world um, had, it's like my whole world had come crashing down. <clears throat> so I, I, I really don't want you to give up your faith. But I don't want you to be believing in nonsense and like this divine healing thing. Now I don't, I don't know whether you know, but you can check it out yourself. Slavery is allowed in the Bible. It's, it's allowed in the Old Testament. And it's also allowed in the New Testament. In the New Testament, Paul had a set of instructions for Christian slaves and Christian masters who owned slaves. He didn't outright come out and say, you know, Slavery is wrong. It's uh, God forbids it. He did not say that. The fact that he actually gave some advice to Christians who were slaves and Christians who were masters shows that slavery was okay in the New Testament. Now, I don't know any church who is crazy enough <clears throat> to actually say, well, since it's in the Bible, so we are going to follow the Bible and our church supports 
the right for anyone to own slaves. That is crazy. It's against human rights. It's inhumane to own a slave. And I think that we all know that. So what does the church do about that? No, the church just doesn't talk about it anymore. The church does not make a big deal out of owning a slave. If you've never heard about slavery being allowed in the Bible, then congratulations. Your church has done a good job in not mentioning this very horrible um, thing, this very inhumane practice. <clears throat> so the same thing, lah. I think that if you are a Christian, you enjoy going to church, you don't want to give up your faith, and now you're stuck with God doesn't heal. So just don't rely on God for your healing. Lah. Just like slavery, don't do it. Lah. Now, <clears throat> I say this because if you were to rely on God, on faith, for healing, there might be consequences that are terrible. And I want to tell you a story about this lady whom I met. This is many years ago. And that at that time, I was a salesman. So, I was visiting um, this customer I went to the to their office and there were a few ladies there and I was chatting with them and then I noticed that one of the ladies had a limp so I asked her oh did you sprain your ankle or something and she said no no I've, I've always had this limp uh, and she told me that when she was a child she had uh, she was playing hide and seek and you know the bed, <clears throat> you know, you, you can take apart your bed and and just uh, remove the pieces of wood that uh, makes up the bed frame. Well, uh, she, this bed was already uh, disassembled and it was being propped up uh, against uh, the wall. So she, this little girl, had went and hidden herself behind this bed frame that was propped up against the wall. Well, while playing, the bed frame fell on her. Of course, she cried and everything and then the parents came out and, and rubbed her back and then it was very painful and then they rubbed oil on the back and, and on her back and whatnot and then a few days later she still complained that it still hurt and uh, so what the family did was the family took her to a Chinese sensei and the Chinese sensei did his magic uh, massage thing and then sent them send the little girl home uh, but the little girl still complained that it was still painful after a few days and they took her to the hospital one x-ray later the doctor announced that she had cracked her spine. <sighs> but it was too late. So because of that, the spine did not uh, heal properly. And now this lady walks with a limp and will walk with a limp for the rest of her life. I want you to put yourself in that kind of situation. I want you to imagine that your child has a fever and so you pray for your child lay hands on your child hallelujah in the name of Jesus command this fever to leave my child's body I claim healing in the name of Jesus by his stripes my child is healed you send your child to sleep but the fever still, you know, comes and goes. 
So you give your child a bit of medicine and every day you stand in faith. In fact, you even get some of your cell group members to stand in faith with your child. Little do you know, your child actually was suffering from dengue. Now, dengue is something not to be trifled with. You can die from dengue. But because you're a man of faith, <clears throat> you refuse to have your faith wavering. You, your faith is strong. You believe in God. Because anything more, anything, anything that contrary to faith is not faith. If you take, took your child to the hospital, you've lost your faith. You've lost faith in God and His ability to heal your child. So, since you believe in God, you have faith in God, so you just stand in faith for your child's healing. But your child has dengue. You don't know that. You just think that your child has a fever. What would you do if your child really died because of dengue fever? See the consequences of believing and standing in faith <clears throat> You know, when you have a small problem, like uh, your, you have a headache or you woke up and you had a pain in your, in your arm or your shoulder or whatever it is, and you pray, and then on Wednesday, cell group night, you give testimony, you know the Lord healed me, I had a migraine, and then uh, I prayed, and then a couple of hours later, I was healed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's okay. What if you didn't know that you had something worse? Let's not talk about the small things. What if you were like Andrew and you got cancer? You want to stand in faith? I want you to remember that if something were to happen to you, not only would you lose your life, your children will lose a father, your brothers and sisters will lose a sibling, your friends would lose you as a friend, grandparents will lose a grandchild, it's really, the consequences are great. <clears throat> so I really hope that you think very carefully before you put your faith in divine healing and this faith healing and really trust God for healing when in actual fact, I've I know for sure that God does not heal. I got another story to tell you. When I was uh, in Australia as a student, and uh, <clears throat> when I was uh, really serving God, uh, I there was a uh, Christian convention, a big Christian convention that I think was held over a week and it was at the Perth Convention Centre. It wasn't even at our church building. It was, yeah, it was, you know, churches from around Perth uh, had joined up to <clears throat> for the convention. And um, wow. That this American preacher 
who every night would heal people. And that was, I think that was one of the first times I saw a healing, a healing rally. I was amazed. I was blown away. I really believed that God could heal people. However, now, now that we've got the internet and we have cameras that you can hide in, in your pockets and whatnot, well, people have filmed and exposed all these charlatans. When once these people were hailed as miracle workers, <clears throat> now we know that they are nothing more than charlatans. When the people who were supposedly healed at healing rallies, when people followed up with them to find out whether their cancer had shriveled up and died, their goiters had disappeared, whether their, their bones had miraculously healed, they found that nothing had changed. Nothing. I've seen Christians, faith healers, Christian ministry, healing ministry, preachers, who had promised to show evidence. It seems that they had it, but in the end, nothing. Well, nothing because God does not heal. There's no such thing as faith healing or divine healing. So, I hope that if you are a Christian, you would think about what I've just said. Think about it carefully. And I would advise you to stop believing and putting your faith in this divine healing and faith healing. And if you are ever sick, you should seek medical help. See a doctor, please, because these doctors take five years of studying. They have to pass exams so that they know what they are talking about. They know how to give you treatment, proper treatment. After their five years of university studies, they have to serve as housemen in various hospitals before they are allowed to even be a full-fledged doctor. So I would encourage you to see a doctor. If you have loved ones who are sick, see a doctor. You can um, talk to your doctor about anything, even things that you think are sensitive. I heard from um, a doctor that a lot of women suffer from breast cancer because they, w they were too embarrassed to go and talk to a doctor about it. They had felt <clears throat> a lump in their breast and uh, what they would do is they would just pray and hope that the lump would go away. But cancer is cancer. Cancer doesn't care whether you're a Christian, you're not a Christian, you're a good person, you're a bad person, you got faith, you don't have faith. And this doctor was saying how many times she had seen women uh, having to undergo mastectomy, isn't it? The one that where they remove your breast. Mastectomy. Because the other ones where you remove the man. Well, anyway. <clears throat> and she was saying that, you know, if it was early detection, if, if the, the lump was detected early, they didn't, wouldn't have to remove the breast at all. Now, removing the breast is not life-threatening. However, there is a huge psychological impact 
on the patient. So, if you if you consider the just the psychological impact on the patient, I think it's enough for you to be concerned. <laughs> I've got another story to tell you. When I was in, uh, this is during the uh, the healing rally, that that healing rally I was telling you we had in Perth, and uh, I had a housemate at, at that time, and his uh, his name is Wilson. His name, yeah, his name is Wilson. <clears throat> and we we all went to the night uh, service, you know, and we all sang songs and believed in faith and stood with the, stood in faith with the preacher as he uh, healed people and laid hands on them and and claimed healing for them in the name of Jesus. And Wilson was. He so believed in uh, faith healing that he came back and told us that he was going to stand in faith. And, uh, hey. Hi, evening. Yeah, he was going to stand in faith. And ask God to uh, remove his molar right at the back of his mouth. It was uh, an impacted tooth. And instead of getting the dentist to do it, now you have to keep in mind, Australia is a great country. But if you're a foreigner, if you're a student, and if you needed medical attention, boy, you got to have deep pockets for that, you know. <laughs> so since God's healing is free, so Wilson was going to believe in God and stand in faith that God would remove the molar miraculously, magically. And then I remembered one night he, he knocked on our bedroom doors and asked us all to come out and said, Guys, could you just uh, stand in faith with me? It's, it's really painful. <laughs> so we all stood around him and we laid our hands on him and we prayed and prayed and prayed for God to remove that molar from his mouth. <laughs> I think you guys can guess what happened after that. Yeah, he had to go and see a dentist to get it extracted. I'm just trying to tell you that God doesn't heal. Huh? So stop putting your faith in it. Stop believing in it. But please, if you need medical attention, seek medical attention, go get medical attention. Our country has got free uh, health care for all Malaysians. Uh, so, and if you are worried about you being a bad Christian because you don't believe in Jehovah Rapha anymore, well, if anybody asks, just tell them uh, that you don't believe in God being a healer just as much as you don't believe in the in the right for a person to own slaves as stated in the Bible. So that's my musing for today, for tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video.